Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of The Banner Saga 2. It is by Stoic and vs. Evil. Releases on April 19th. And if you act now and you get it before it releases, you will get it at 10% off as a pre-purchase discount. There is scheduled to be no discount upon the release of the game. That being said, why am I excited about The Banner Saga 2? I played The Banner Saga 1. I covered The Banner Saga 1. I remember because I was deathly ill and dying at the time. I had, like, the plague. I had just come back from my last visit to the U.S. And my parents and all that wonderful fun stuff came back. I was coughing. I was dying. It was awful. The game itself was fantastic, also horribly saddening, and made you want to die on the inside. Because it made you feel things a little too deeply. So what is it? I'm not going to tell you. Just, uh, well, I guess I can, t I can tell you. Ban the Banner Saga is basically a Viking-esque turn-based strategy game with a very heavy narration and storyline where your choices do matter. People will die based on your choices and how you play. And once they're dead, they're dead. So let's watch what happened in the previous episode of the Banner Saga. When the sun stopped in the sky, life continued as normal. Then the stone armored dredge reappeared. Ancient foes from the far northern reaches and the world was thrown into chaos. Giant Varl defenders were slaughtered, their strongholds destroyed. Now Hakon is the Varl king and protects who is left of his race. Rook, a humble hunter and father of Alet, found himself leading frightened clansmen towards safety. His caravan crossed paths with Juno and Ivand, two of the mysterious spellweavers known as Menders, who know something about the massive mountain-breaking serpent on the loose. In Borsgard, a town under the protection of the mercenary leader, Bolverk, both Varl and humans stood against a dredge general. The immortal Sunder, known as Bellower. Juno devised a way to stop Bellower. But it cost the life of one held dear. The saga continues. And there you have it, folks. That is the recap of what happened in the first game. Now, I gotta admit, it was early on in my YouTubing. I probably didn't do a very great job covering the game. But I've learned a little bit since then. And I actually know that I had, um... Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen, uh... The Banner Saga 1, maybe go back and watch that really quickly. And I will wait. No, uh, anyway, if you haven't seen The Banner Saga 1, you might want to skip this briefly until... Because I'm gonna ruin, uh, basically... Well, you'll see here. It's going to tell you right now. Unfortunately, I cannot import my saved game because I checked and it's not still saved on my computer. Unfortunately, since I had to redo my hard drive a couple times since then, I do not have it. Therefore, my choices aren't going to be made for me. But I know that Alette ended up dying in the final mission of the last game. So she's not going to be the one that we're going to choose. We're going to choose Rook, but let's read what Alette says. Since the tragic events at Borsgard, the families of the caravan look to Alette, daughter of Rook, the former leader, to guide them. Though young, her compassion for others and ability with a bow have impressed all but the most stubborn clan leaders. Calling on her personal resolve and lifetime friendship with the archer Odleif, or Odleif, and the massive Varl Ivor, Alette must continue her father's work of seeing the caravan to safety on the distant capital city of Arborang. And what we're going to actually choose here is Rook. Overcome with grief from the death of his daughter at the Battle of Borsgard, Rook, a skilled hunter and proven leader, Wonders why anyone would still follow his lead. With the help of a lifelong friend, the giant Varl Ivor, perhaps he can change the tragic patterns of losing those who depend on him and ensure the caravan's safety on the long journey to the human capital of Arborang. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll out with Rook because that's what we chose in the last one. Stoic is indeed the creator versus Evil is the publisher. And let us be mesmerized. 
Time continues washing over us, moment after moment, like waves on a coast. Some more fierce, more violent than others. So few of my kind, the giant war, remain alive. Even so, I find myself wondering if humans, while able to bear children, suffer more for the loss of loved ones. Several weeks have passed since we slew the Sunder known as Pelower, but the chaos of the world did not wither as we hoped. The world is breaking. We sail aboard hastily crafted ships for the safety of Arberain, the human capital. But the river curses us with a clear view of the dreads assaulting another hopeless village. Well, that can't be good. Are we going to help that hopeless village and bring them hope? Then they'll have to rename their village because it won't be the hopeless village anymore. Or are we going to sit by and do nothing? Oh, no! Oh, that's going to leave a mark. Move away from those glowing rocks. This one's mine. Huh. No! No! To the depths with you! I stab you! Oh dear god. That was not the play, buddy. Oh no! But don't fear, Rook is here! To your knees, demon! Keep killing them! Our viral brethren are coming up as well. Damn it, Rook! Quit running ahead! Drag around the screen to see your surroundings, then click the check mark to continue. Whee! Sorry, guys. All right, so you can drag to see the surroundings. I think you used to be able to use WASD. I don't know if we're still able to. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, I continue. These portraits show the order of initiative. Taking turns from left to right. Your heroes are blue. The enemies are red. It is your turn to act. All right. So one of the complaints most people had with this game. Um, in comparison to many other turn-based strategy games are the fact that it's your turn, enemy's turn, your turn, enemy's turn, your turn, enemy's turn. So as the enemies get fewer and fewer, the one enemy that's left gets to act more and more. So it gets difficult. You can't actually set up like a triple or a quadruple attack and flank somebody and kill them off in one shot. You really have to space out your attacks. Now it looks like they continue to go with this design. And I know, like I said, a lot of people didn't like it. I personally prefer maybe an actual speed-based initiative thing, but this isn't that bad, guys, so don't let it deter you. If you're a little bit hung up on it, it's still a good game. It's still going to be a lot of fun. So, Movement happens before action. This ring shows that Ivor is active. The blue tiles around him shows you where he can move. Some heroes fill more tiles than others. The horned heroes are a race of giants called the Bjarl, or the Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move to and then click the check mark to confirm it. Move Ivor here to get him into attack range. Alright. Guess we're going to move here and bam. Alright. To target an enemy, click on the tile where they stand. Heroes tiles are blue, enemies are red. Target this enemy now by clicking his tile. Alright. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or to break his armor. The numbers beneath each icon, 2 and 8, show the damage you will deal to that stat. So we'll break 2 of his armor, and then we'll try to do 8 damage. So I believe how this works, if I recall correctly, uh, if we went with the strength attack, we would hit 4 of his armor, and it would be absorbed, and we would only do 4 damage to him overall. Alright, uh, strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of 8 strength means the character will now do 8 less damage. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. This is true too. You can actually nerf the enemy's strength. So say he was at full at like 15, he only does 7 damage now as opposed to a full eight or a full 15. If we hit him when we dropped him 4 more, he'd only be able to do up to 3 damage at that point. Alright, so there you go. That's how it works thus far, folks.
Armor blocks strength damage but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. This enemy only has 7 strength remaining. A strength attack will kill it. Click the red fist icon now to now to attack his strength and confirm your choice. It shouldn't kill it, should it? I thought it blocks... Hmm. Okay. And then click again to confirm it. I was pretty sure that the armor was supposed to block that. That's odd. Or maybe that's how much... Oh, that is. Okay, so that's actually after mitigation. So normally we would have done 12, but with the 4 armor, we still did 8. I, I apologize, I forgot how that actually works. So my apologies, guys. So when you're actually on the... I'll show you in the next battle. He's down. Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. Alright, without an enemy to reach, this dredge grunt will choose to smash an obstacle in his way. Obstacles on the combat board will make you change tactics, so plan wisely to make to make them work to your benefit. Alright, so he's angry, he's gonna be like, Bruh, Hulk smash! Alright, now it's a Hakan's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all heroes can use willpower to boost their actions. By clicking on the gold tiles, a hero can move further than usual, and it will cost one willpower for each step that includes a golden tile. Red uh, pulsing tiles beneath your enemy shows how close you have to get to be within range. Move Hakan into attack range now. So we're going to go right there. Alright, it's going to cost us two willpower. Our willpower stat's right here. So we're going to go over here and get right up on him. Clicking your hero's tile at any time will also bring up this combat or all of his combat options, including move, ability, attack, and end turn. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but Hakan has a special ability that will give him a unique advantage. Click Hakan's purple ability to or purple icon to access his ability right now or access it. The ability description appears in the tooltips below. Hakan's sundering impact allows him to hit so hard that multiple adjacent tiles take damage on every hit. It shows it down here. Sundering impact adds strength and armor damage to a target and adjacent enemies. So let's uh okay. Select the enemy's tile and then confirm your choice. We want to make sure we hit this guy, so we hit both of these. Alright, and blammo, that should annihilate these guys. And there it is. Oh, we did a little bit of damage to him. A powerful strike! When there is only one enemy left, heroes enter pillage mode. During pillage, each hero moves in order, and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. So if we take a look, he's going to move once, and then we'll all get to move. So when you're down to the last one, it enters, you done wrecked some fools, and now you get to kill everybody situation. So it's really good. It's really good. Alright, so he's going to move around. He's going to smack Hakan. Did one damage. So let's take a quick look here. Oh, hold on. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest and regain one willpower. Aleo will rest this time around. Or Aleo. Alright. Looks like the dredge is in some trouble. Rook won't be able to finish a job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost his damage. Click on the dredge grunts tile to attack. Alright, so we're going to click here. Now I want you to realize that this is now how much damage you will do. It's based off of his stats, which you see here, it's 10 out of 11. So he does... 10 normally right now and this guy has 8 armor so it brings it down to 2 so that's how you're supposed to read these battles click the red fist icon and then the star above the fist icon to add willpower to the attack and the number of stars available each turn are determined by your exertion stat which is this one right here uh, you'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower click the star and then the check mark to kill this enemy and boom, that will be three points of damage, and that will end this guy's life. There it is, plus one renown. We were victorious, and we slaughtered the enemy. Not finished! Whoa, he's going crazy. Look at him, he's charging into the woods by himself. Oh, Rook is definitely feeling a little bit of angst after uh, the death of his daughter. They did defeat the immortal, though. Whoa! Ow. Man, he's just chopping the dude down like he's a tr Oh my god, man. What are you doing? Uh, 
Uh... Really? So this is the thing, huh? This does not look like a good thing at all. Alright, well clearly Rook is uh, in over his head a little bit here. I gotta say... I am not a fan of... I don't even know where to start here. This is a bit off-putting. Um... Huh. Well, we don't do a tremendous amount of damage. I mean, even if we tried to hit this guy, we wouldn't do much. Hitting that guy is almost impossible. This guy is pretty tanky. He's our easiest target. What if we go here? Confirm our, confirm our move. And then we attack. We can only do two damage. Well, whatever. Let's do it. Pretty sure we don't win this fight. Without a lot of help. Ouch. That didn't feel good. Alright, so Rook's going to come over here now. He can continue to try to do as much damage as he can conceivably possibly do. Eh. I need to break armor in order to avoid deflections. Actually, you know, maybe it would have been possible for me to win this. Maybe I'm being a little bit silly. The turn order is a thing down here, and if I utilize the turn order correctly, it would have been possible for me to win, maybe. Or maybe this is just one of those things where it's like, You will never win, you fool! Alright, we're gonna go for broke here. Yeah! I need to break armor to avoid deflections. Oh, he's gonna go down. Pretty sure this was scripted. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, here they come. Pretty sure he just had to go down. The final blow directed at your head is deflected and giant horns slam into the dredge surrounding you. Ivor pulls you to your feet and away from combat as other fighters from your caravan rush in to finish off the enemy. Ivor moves you past the crowd of worried villagers, ensuring that you can stand on your own. I don't know what you were... He stops speaking as a village chieftain appears. Of our old leaders saving a human village from... those things? Legends are made of much less. No Varl leader, just Ivor. Those things were dredge, like the stories you probably heard as a kid. And it was Rook here who ordered us to stop. Forgive me, maybe this never ending or never setting sun or dredge or the death of so many of my clansmen. I'm not myself. The man's eyes appraise you and he quickly nods. I'm a Leo, the Scald. Were you trying to drive the dredge all the way back north by yourself? We're going to remain silent. I wouldn't stop there. We should tr get ready to leave. I wouldn't stop there. He's a little angry right now. Leo looks into your eyes for a moment before recoiling. Something terrible must have happened to have such hatred for them. A topic for another time, Scald. Maybe. Of course, mind if I ask news from Borsgard? We heard rumor that Sunder Bellower was laying waste to the town. More than a rumor, but he's been dealt with. By, by, by your clan? You're Sunder Slayers? The turn makes Ivor wince and ends Aleo's excitement. But what about the deep shaking in the ground? Only yesterday we felt a rumble like none before. You think we have all the answers? Could be the giant serpent. Say nothing. Could be the giant serpent. Sounds good. The serpent in the sun? Radomir? I'm no holy man, but joking about dead gods feels wrong. About as opposite of Radomir as it gets. This one's determined to swallow us all. Scald looks skeptical. Killing a Sunder is a big enough tale on its own, for now. Then let's get ready to leave. Not to sound ungrateful, but you know, this place, it's all we have. It's our home. We never, never should have stopped. Not quietly. Don't be stupid. More dredge are coming. Wanting to defend what's your... Wanting to defend what's yours isn't stupid. You know that. I know that this village lost fighters today, so they have less of a chance defending themselves tomorrow. Rook is right. I hope they... I hope their defeat here today would keep the dredge away, but when voiced... 
The Skald looks around at the small huts of his village. Boar's Guard is the only other place I've seen in my life. This small village is all my family knows. Are things really as tragic as you're making them sound? Probably worse. Aleo looks back and forth between you and Ivor before nod nodding. <sighs> Packing and tending to our dead will take some time, but I'll have everyone on the ship soon. Aleo heads off to the village to organize supplies. Ivor, one of the giants known as Varl, has fought Dredge in the northern winters, personally killed the Sunder Rays, and lost an arm to the Sunder Bellower. He has been by your side through everything, including the death of your daughter. Now you feel the weight of his full attention. What you pulled out there, fighting the dredge alone, was that tied to Aletta, or, sorry, Alette at all? I want to call her Aletta, I don't know why. Uh, let's see. They'll pay for taking her from me. Don't mention her name! I'm trying my best to hold it all together. The villagers could possibly, or probably use your strength. Um, he's only got one arm, by the way. He lost his arm, like they just said, fighting the guy at the end of the last game. Uh, let's see here. They'll pay for taking her from me. Not much of a plan. I don't care about a feigned plan. They killed her. Bellower killed her, and we killed him. And she's still gone. I shouldn't have let her fire that arrow. Maybe that's why you charged into those dredge alone. You think you deserve to die. Only the lapping waves on the bank disturbed the silence. I felt the same way back on the bridge in Ion... What is it? Ion... Ion Nartoff? By the way, I'm going to butcher every single thing in this game when it comes to pronunciation. So just be aware of that. It is not going to be enunciated, pronounced, or anything right. So just just, just mark it off as a... Oh, bumpy. And just, just go on from there, guys. Alright, what changed your mind? Not sure it has changed, but these people, they need a leader. That better be enough to change yours. He walks toward the village, leaving you alone with your thoughts. Alright, well there you have it. Chapter 8. From their homes, all must flee. Alright, here we are. The traveling merchants are surprisingly well stocked. Ubin, the old Varl dubbed Scriven, Scrivener, says, Since Boyersgard, our numbers have grown. People have scavenged for food and eaten it too. Regardless, we'll need plenty of supplies considering our destination. Where can I find the merchants? What kind of supplies? What kind of supplies? Stuff like food and mead for the trip, the merchants have got a few interesting items as well, but folks can't eat those in lean times. You'll have to choose wisely. Even your renown will only stretch so far. Well, where can I find the merchants? You can't miss them, he says. A group of tents they call a market. Thanks, Ubin. Of course, he says. Oh, almost forgot. There's something ruffling the feathers of the ravens, the mercenaries who followed us from Borsgard. Chat with their leader, Bulwark, but be careful, he's not like other Varl. Alright, this medallion gives you information about your caravan, including population, supplies, renown, and the number of days that have passed. This banner indicates how, that you have enough supplies and provisions for your caravan for nine days of resting or travel. The larger population requires more supplies per day to survive. You can acquire additional supplies at this market, click on the market to see what's available. And I guess we'll click on it real quick. These are the supplies the merchant has available. He will give you five per renown, and you will need 12 supplies per day to survive. This shows what you have. Your 111 supplies will last nine days. You have 21 renown available to purchase the supplies. Okay. Click this button to add 15 or more supplies to your caravan. The area to the left will show how these supplies affect your caravan. Now that you've added your supplies, you must confirm the change by pressing this button. Alright. Markets also have items available. These items are equipped by your heroes and can provide a great advantage. 
The required hero rank is shown in the red circles. All right. Oops. Cancel. Okay. Um, hero rank of five. It's Nemez's ring. I guess we can click on it. Oh, it tells us down here. This ring was once worn by one of the great kings of men to symbolize the unification of his people. Plus two strength resist and plus one per will per kill. All right, and it says the same thing there. Cool. All right, for ten renown, I guess they're forcing us to buy this. Oh, we're not. Oh, I just needed to. Oops. Awkward. I just needed to click OK, but we just bought a ring for ten renown. It's a bit awkward. I, I totally intended to do that. That's fine. When finished, exit the market by clicking this button. All right. Well, I think we're finished because I just bought a ring, probably unintended. Anyway, folks, this is where I'm going to break off this first episode. There will be another one or two to come today, and then we'll just kind of ease into the, or we'll ease back on the series and just enjoy it as it comes. I hope you guys really enjoyed this first episode. I, I'm really excited to get back into this game. It's a lot of fun. I'm ready to butcher a lot of different places, names, and things. It's going to be a lot of fun, and, well, if I hadn't mentioned it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, I hope you guys enjoy. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I'll catch you guys in just a bit with the next episode of The Banner Saga 2. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the free show, and I will see you later. <laughs>